Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. I'm going to dismiss the platform. So thank you for leading us in worship today. Are you ready to receive? I uh, I mentioned in the uh, in the WhatsApp channel this morning that there'd be multiple guest speakers, and uh, maybe some people stayed home because of that I don't know. I suspect if you came, it's because you were ready for that. But uh, I want to say it's good to have my dad here today, and uh, I'm excited to uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what God's going to do today through all of this. It's also good to have our friends. Uh, Isaac and Lacey Middleton with us today, and uh, I just, my dad's going to come and minister in a few minutes here, and when he's finished ministering, he's going to turn the mic to him, and so I'm going to say this, and then this is it, and I'm out. Was it six years ago? You were last year? Yeah, six years ago, 2014. I can't do math this morning. 2014, Isaac Middleton decided he wanted to fix iPhones. And so uh, he came up here, and uh, he sat under the tutelage for a week of Bishop and Brother Tolbert, wherever he disappeared to. And uh, I don't know that I'd spent much time or even talked to Isaac before then, but uh, my house was the hotel that week. And boy, am I glad it was. There was something that the Holy Ghost did. You know, we, we talk around here about God placing members in the body as he see, sees fit. So if God can place members in the body as he sees fit, then can he also connect members in the body that maybe aren't in the same location or in the same place, but he connects us together. And uh, here's how you know that there's, there's connections that God makes because you don't necessarily always stay in contact with them. You don't always talk every day. You don't always talk every week, every month sometimes, sometimes months at a time. There have been times where it's been maybe close to a year at a time. And then that text comes, you alive? Yeah, I'm alive. Where have you been? I don't know, just busy with life. And the Holy Ghost picks right back up. And there's that flow of fellowship, of ministry. And none of you guys are doing iPhones anymore, are you? So it was was the catalyst. (laughs) It wasn't the end. It was just the beginning. It was the catalyst. And uh, I appreciate his ministry and uh, his beautiful family. It's the first time his family has been to the Northwest, and so welcome. Welcome to Life Church. We're glad that you, you all are here. Would you stand and lift your hands right now all across the room? I don't want you to ask the Lord to give you the grace to receive everything that comes across this pulpit today. In the name of Jesus, Father, right now, we yield ourselves to you. We ready ourselves to receive right now everything that you have for us in this hour, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. These hours are yours, Father. These days belong to you. We know they're short. We know they're numbered, Father. And so we ready ourselves to receive of you. We ready ourselves to be empowered by your spirit, Father, to do the work that you've called us to do in this late hour. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Could we just worship the Lord one more time? I really feel the Lord wants to do some great things today in this service, and you might as well be the recipient of that. Can we just worship him a few more minutes? Father, we come to you today. God, we're humbled, we're honored to be in your presence, God. Lord, we're thankful for everything you're working and doing in our lives in this very interesting day that we live, Lord. And we know that, God, you have everything in control. And you're working mighty miracles, signs, and wonders today, God. And we're thankful for that, God. We're excited, Lord God, to be in the house of God. Excited to be in the work of the kingdom of God. Wherever we go, whatever we do, Father, we thank you today, God, that you've allowed us to be a part of your plan and a part of your purpose in the earth today, Lord. 
Lord. I'm asking for your help today, God. We can do nothing without you. So we pray right now that, God, a heavy anointing of your spirit would flow into this place greater than it even is right now. That, God, there's some things you want to accomplish today. I pray, God, we'll open our heart to it. We'll open our spirit to it. That somewhere our faith will rise in you today. That, God, all things are possible unto them that but believe. And, Lord, I believe today you can do anything, Lord God. All things are possible today. Miracles, signs, and wonders of every kind today, God. And we thank you for it in advance, God, of what you're about to do today. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Bishop, how much liberty do I have? (laughs) I'm going to do some strange things, maybe a little bit different than kind of a normal service would run, but it's what I feel in the Holy Ghost. The first thing I want to deal with right now is I want to bind the spirit of the fear of COVID-19. So many people are not receiving what God has for them because of the fear that is in their life of what may happen and what may come in contact with. You cannot get a miracle from God if you live in fear, doubt, or unbelief. It's impossible, God, because i got to have faith to believe, number one, that God is the healer and he wants to heal my body. He wants to heal me spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. I don't know where the healing needs to come in everybody, but I'm here to tell you that's what he came to do in our life. But he asked two blind men, he said, do you believe I can do this? And they said, yes, Lord, be it according to your faith. So God wants you in the middle of this miracle today. God wants you to reach out in faith right now. Let's just take a moment and bind any spirits of doubt or fear or unbelief this morning that would cause you to not receive what God has for you today. Can we do that together? Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We take authority right now, God, spiritual authority over all the power of the enemy right now. We bind the spirit of fear of sickness, Lord God, that we would get it and that if we went to church or somewhere that, God, there was this bad thing happened to me, but I bind that spirit of fear. I bind that spirit of doubt. I bind that spirit of unbelief today. But Father, I pray that faith could be released in this house right now. Faith could be released right now. Come on, somebody activate your faith. Somebody release your faith right now in Almighty God. Oh, Lord, I believe today, God. I've come in my body sick, but I'm not leaving this way, God. I've come hurting in my spirit, but I've come for a healing today, God. The Lord is doing, he has always done great things. But I believe we've entered into a season in these last days where we're going to see more miracles than we've ever seen before. You're going to see lives transformed like you've never seen before. I'm not talking about what's about to happen. I could spend some time sharing testimony of what's going on in the seal of church and miracles and signs and wonder. And and, and the beautiful thing is it's saints of God laying hands on other people at work and God doing miracles of opening blind eyes, God doing miracles of, of raising them up. Amen. You know why? Because somebody started believing that God would use me whether I'm on my job or in the house of the Lord. But God would use me. Just to mention a little bit of what was said last week was out of the the 16th chapter of the book of Mark. And the Lord had dealt with me uh, where he talked about they'd lay hands upon the sick and they'd recover, they'd speak with new tongues. He goes through that dialogue. He said, but it said, and, and they went forth preaching everywhere, the Lord confirming his word. Do you realize when it comes to confirming his word, it's from Genesis to Revelation. It is not just about the four previous verses in there, but God said he would confirm his word. You may have a financial need today, but your giving may have caused a response from God. Because why? 
why you acted in faith because you probably didn't have it to give but by faith I'm going to give it so that God has something to work with he'll confirm his word give it it shall be given come on good man you're pressed down shaking together and running over but you had to get out of your chair and you had to walk up here and you had to put it in an offering and say God that was my gas money God that was my light bill but I'm giving it to you because you confirm your word you confirm your word so you got to understand today God is moving in the realm of confirming his word I don't know what you need, but he's here to confirm his word in your heart and in your life if you're willing to reach out. I want to go to Matthew the, or Luke, the fifth chapter and the 17th verse. I haven't preached this verse in probably 30 years. In fact, I only got it a few minutes ago, so if you're really getting nervous now. <laughs> but it's what the Lord is doing in the church of the living God. I fear sometimes we, we pray for things, but we really don't believe it's going to happen. You know, I pray for miracles, but you know that? That's just other churches. That's just other places. I'm here to tell you, God heard your prayer. You prayed that in a sincere desire that you want to see it. But there's just something on the inside that said, hey, it probably, I, I probably wouldn't see it. That's the spirit I want to get rid of. I, I want you to touch God today in your, in your faith right now. Whatever you need from God. My wife received a healing in that service last Sunday in her hips, the arthritis, and the pain that has been in those hips, and, and just trying to get to church and back, and, and all the stuff you battle. God sees everything today, but somewhere we've got to have some faith that God is going to heal me. The Lord is on my side. Come on, Psalms 56, he's for me. See, I believe God could heal Bishop, but I don't know about me. Come on, I believe God could heal Nick, but I don't know about me. We start. We got to start believing, no, this is for me too. I'm not going to be just praying for everybody else, but when God brings a need into my life that he needs to show me how strong and how powerful he is in my life, then I, that's why he's doing that. I preached the other night, and, and man, I can't get this out of my spirit. It just it, This is something just turns over in me over and over. I learned that only 10% of the world in the day of Adam and Eve and Noah and all the way through to the New Testament, only 10% of the people knew how to read and write. So preaching of the gospel was so important because speaking was how they read. I want you to catch that. Come on. It was the preaching. Why did God raise up prophets? So that he could speak to the people what God wanted for their lives. And sometimes we downplay church when, wait a minute, do you realize, get, you got to get this into perspective. There are 130 million people in church every Sunday, more than it's in any, every NFL game combined together and more than every movie theater in the United States of America. There are more people in church. Why? People are hungry for God, and they want to hear the preaching, and they want somebody to witness to them. They want somebody to testify to them. Why? The power's in the spoken word. Come on, I'm not taking anything away from this. But when I came to God, I didn't know how to open a Bible. I couldn't even read and write at the age of 24. So they had a search for tooth chart sitting there, and I could draw a conclusion out of the pictures, draw it on the chart. And I turned my life over to him. Come on, you're underestimating the power of your spoken word on the job. Come on, in a grocery store somewhere, getting gas somewhere. You're underestimating the power of your testimony. Come on, everybody in this place, you got a testimony. Come on, God saved you. He brought you out of something. You got something you can share with somebody. Come on. Then once you get past that stage of your new, new convert and you can start getting in the word, now you can start teaching Bible studies. Everybody, I teach a Bible study. I tell them this. I'm teaching you to teach. I may be teaching you, but if you think it ends right here, you're wrong. 
that you're going to take that Bible study that I've taught you and you're going to go teach others. Why? That's what God meant it to do. It had to reciprocate. Come on, it couldn't just end at me. I couldn't teach 40 people then nobody else goes on and teaches someone else. you got to realize our spoken word, when we're speaking to them, God is doing amazing things in their spirit. We retired in January from full-time pastorship. But I love to win souls. So I got in contact. I got a call and said, will you work with this young man? He fell away from God about eight years ago. Would you meet up with him? I said, absolutely. I called him and said, hey, we're going to have dinner about six. You want to be here? Yeah. He's a single guy. I mean, loves food. <laughs> yeah. So he was there. We began in about two to three months with him. But now we're up to seven to nine in that home Bible study of his family coming in. Why? Because what I'm going to teach you, you teach them. You share with them the power of prayer. You share with them about reading the Bible. They, they, one, of the, one of the twins brought a girlfriend to our Bible study, and she looked at us at the end of Bible study and said, I don't have a Bible. I said, I know I got one around here I can give you. And we handed her that Bible study. I'm here to tell you, people don't know anything about God. In my Bible study, it's just like when I came to the Lord. They don't know Genesis from Revelation or any books in between. So you got to take a little time and help everybody. Let me help you here. Let me help you here. Because somebody did that for me. Somebody did that for me. What are you doing for someone else? Are you letting the word of God get in your heart? Get in your spirit? I, I, I got to share my testimony. Now, I, I don't mean go out and just blast everybody. I'm talking about being sensitive to the Holy Ghost. That if you're in line at a store somewhere or, or you're working on a job and, and God begins to prompt you that you need to share something with Him. I prayed with people on the job for healings. Prayed for people's marriages to be reconciled on the job. I'm here to tell you what I've always taught for years. You're stuck there eight hours. That's got to be the building of your ministry. Really does. You spend more time on a job than anywhere else. You, you're surrounded by people coming and going many times. And, and, the, and when I came to the Lord, the first job I, or the one I was on there, we actually reached five families with the gospel of Jesus Christ because I was witnessing all through that sawmill and, and, and talking to people. And then I would read my Bible during lunch hour and they'd come up to me and say, hey, what's the Bible say about this? Hey, could I come to your house and teach you a Bible study? We'll lay all this out for you. And one family after another after another. Why? People need to hear this. I can't go silent in these last days, but I got to start real. I got a voice. God gave me a voice, and I got to start proclaiming the glory and the presence of God. I don't care if you go to work tomorrow and just talk about the miracles God is doing. Man, you should have been in church with us yesterday. Man, there was healings. There were miracles. God was transforming life. There was a drug addict. He'd been on drugs for years, and God delivered him just like that. Come on. When you witness to somebody, you start telling the character of God. He's awesome. He's powerful. He's loving. He's kind. He's merciful. Why? Because he delivered me. He set me free. And when you're witnessing, that's why it's so powerful. It's not you. It's the word of God flowing through you that touches them. It reveals salvation. Your witness to them reveals how to be saved. Why? Because I repented of my sins. Then I was baptized. And I tell you what, my conscience was, it ate me up. It was, it's probably been 30 years ago, but we built a church out of drug addicts and alcoholics with 20 years of jail ministry. I remember baptizing one of the men one day, and he, he came to me a couple days later, and he said, Pastor, the voices are gone in my mind. We live in a generation of drug addicts right now. Their mind never stops 24-7. They, their spirit's dealing in their mind, voices in their mind, and they're seeing all of this. But thank God there's a cure for this. Take them to the waters of baptism and take them down in the water, amen. And they come up with a brand new conscience, and the voices are gone in their mind. Come on, you got a message that you could share with people of the glory and the goodness of God. You know, people sometimes say, well, would, would he do that for me? Well, of course he would. So we begin to realize that, that God put us here for a purpose and a reason. I want to fulfill that. i got to fulfill that because this is what God wants to do. Let's read verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day that he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, 
which come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. I want you to catch that. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. I really feel, Bishop, we're just following from last Sunday. See what I'm saying? Because this is what the Lord gave me, that the power of the Lord was present to heal. Does anybody believe that with me this morning, that God's the healer? Does anybody in this place need a healing today? Come on. Does anybody need a healing today? The healer is in the house right now, and you got to have faith in the name of Jesus. I've asked Bishop two different times to pray for his wife for healing of fibromyalgia. I pray for her every day because my wife has had that too. I understand the pain. I feel to pray for her right now. Anybody got faith in this house? I told you this was going to be a little bit different. But the power, uh, uh, the presence of the healer is here right now. Come on. When he's here, you got to reach out in faith. When he's here, you got to believe him right now. And you got to start reaching out in faith. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Somebody let your faith rise up right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus. It's not God's plan for his leadership to be in pain and suffering and hurting. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come on, she's not the only one that needs a healing in this house right now. Come on. If you need a healing, I want you to step out from where you're at right now. If you've been tormented by spirits in your mind, I want you to step out right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, you got to activate faith. Your faith will cause you to walk up here right now and say, God, I believe your word is true. I believe your word is true right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, reach out. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, come on, release your faith. Come on, don't be, don't be shy, don't be ashamed. Come on, release your faith. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, he's not done yet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church, let's worship. We're in the presence of the Almighty God, and he's moving and working in the house of the Lord. Come on, that's it, that's it. Come on, release your faith. You got to activate it. Come on, they spake the word of faith. You got to speak it, come on. In the name of Jesus, that's it, come on. Come on, lay hands on them people. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is there somebody in here you need a, an emotional healing? You're battling some things in your spirit, and you'd love to get it out of your spirit. I'm here to tell you, God's got deliverance for you today if you want it. Come on, if you're willing to reach out to God right now. Come on, that torment is no fun. We've all been there. We've all experienced it. But it could end today if you want it to. It could end right now if you just reach out in faith right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I want you to start thanking God for what he's just done. Come on, I want you to thank him for what he's done right now. Come on, come on. You couldn't get this in a hospital. You couldn't get this anywhere else. But you found it in the house of the Lord where the presence of the Lord, the power of his presence was here to heal. Come on, there's authority in this place right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some more thanks in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to add add to what Brother John Stone just said and and say for those of you that were believe you've been healed today, he wants you to test it out. That's, that's another step of faith is to test out, test out where the pain was. And maybe it feels better. It may not be all gone, but maybe it feels better. Maybe the Lord has given you a healing process. And over time, he will give you the, he, your body will heal. That is a miracle as well. So don't doubt if it wasn't instantaneous. Believe. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, Brother Johnstone, I will admit to you, I was hoping you would just keep going. Um, not because, you know, preachers want to preach, but uh, when you hear someone, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but when you hear someone with a pure evangelistic gifting minister, it hits the heart real good. It hits the heart real good. And I could I could listen to you preach all day. I have a question. Have you ever been to Maryland to talk about prison ministry? Okay. Okay. I was there that week. I just re- when you started talking about it today, I was like, I re- that's where I remember. Yeah, I was. That was a while ago. I was I was a s- small smaller person than I am now. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God today, isn't it? Seeing all of all of the beautiful faces of the people of God. Uh, before I get into what I feel the Lord has for me to say today, I just want to give honor to all of you that are here. Give honor to your elder brother, Sister John Stone, um, Elder John Stone and Bishop Schoonover, um, Scripture says that those that are that walk worthy should be counted worthy of double honor. And you have special people leading you. Probably heard this before, and I'm not trying to lift them up or put them in a place where pride gets in the way. The Lord knows how to deal with that. But I feel it's really important for you to understand the special people that you have leading you in this congregation. They are wonderful people, tender-hearted, love God. There is nothing more precious to the Lord than, than a heart that is willing to wait to know what to do. Scripture says of Saul that one of his downfalls is that he wanted to do more than he wanted to be obedient. When our propensity to act or to do overrides our ability to be obedient to what God wants us to do, we have a problem. We get in our own way. But it, it's been my experience with the Johnstones and the Schoonovers that they will wait on the Lord. And that is priceless. So I give them honor today. And uh, I came for Nick's birthday. You guys mind if I call him Nick? You, do I have to say Brother Johnson? I'm going to call him Nick if that's fine. Do you mind if I? Okay, good. Thank you. I was going to do it anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> I came for Nick's birthday and um, had no intention of speaking here today. I was told that I was speaking here today. I was not asked. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was told, and I was like, okay, well, good news. I know how you work. I've been waiting on the Lord already. <laughs> um, but it's it's been a pleasure to be here, it's being with seeing a bunch of you at the at the celebration yesterday. It's been wonderful. It's even better having my family with me this time. Um, it's their first time for the children traveling on an airplane. And if you can imagine four children on an airplane for six, seven hours, it was actually quite amazing. They all did very well. We only had about 45 minutes of trouble in the right in the middle of the longest flight. Uh, but after that, it was great. So I salute them and give them honor. And thank you for being here with me, guys. Um, um, taking my time intentionally. Do you mind if I just pray? All right. Um, well, I'm gonna, I've been in the church all my life. I will probably not talk any louder than this today, so if you're expecting something else. Brother Kendrick, am I in the microphone enough for you, sir? Excellent. It's great to see you, by the way. I didn't get to greet you this morning. Um, I've been in the church. I was born in the church. My parents met in church and grew up on an apostolic pew and uh, got married in 2005. And on Thursday, I celebrated my 15th wedding anniversary. Um, but as you know, being a Christian is not always easy. So in true, true to form, my wife and I, um, due to circumstances, had to file bankruptcy 10 years ago. And um, as part of that process, we had to remind ourselves and learn again the importance of seeking the kingdom first. It was something that we were conscious of every day. It was something that we were conscious of every year. Every time a major decision came up, we have to seek the kingdom first. Anyway, as a, as a result of that, um, you know, they say that seven years of bankruptcy falls off your credit report. It takes 10, trust me. <laughs> it takes 10. Um, and when you're, when you're dealing with life, one of the things they don't tell you in, in high school is that there are, that, that life can cause pain. And not only that life can, can cause pain, but with that pain comes the feelings of regret, feelings of rejection. So combined with our circumstance that we were dealing with, we had to deal with the internal struggles. And I'm not sure why I'm telling this story. And I hope it helps someone today. Um, and it, I think it, it'll tie in very well with what Brother John still was saying at the end. Um, but in dealing with all of that, we've walked a, a, tight, a, a tight road for a long time. Every decision was prayed about. Every decision was taken with caution. Not out of not if not fear, but caution, because you don't know how long it's going to take to recover. You don't know, and you know you don't know. There's so many unknowns. And in the in the ten years since since uh, the bankruptcy, we've added two children to our family, uh, three pregnancies, but ten children, ten children, ten years, three pregnancies, two children, two. Let it not be so in the name of Jesus Christ, and. <laughs> You pray it on me, I will pray it on you. <laughs> and the Lord will answer both of us, and we'll have a big problem. <laughs> oh, let it not be so, Lord. Let it not be so, Lord. Anyway, um, three pregnancies, two children later, we have four children. Um, ten years have advanced. The bankruptcy has fallen off, our credit report. But in that time... In that, that in, as you can know from what Brother Johnston said, six years ago is within that time frame when I came here. Um, 
Walking through the process of doing the will of God every day will find you doing all sorts of different things. And that's why I was fixing iPhones. Because it was, it was the thing I was supposed to be doing in that time. And I did it as long as I was supposed to and moved on. And since that time, and I was telling Nick a little bit about this this morning, uh, in the last, in, in the four years since I've been in the industry I'm in now, the Lord has tremendously blessed us. Um, I will not give you the numbers just because they're private and I only share them with him because he's a close friend. But the Lord has tremendously blessed us financially in the last four years. And in Maryland, the, the housing market is similar to here. But um, in Maryland, there aren't as many stay-at-home moms because income is just it's just ridiculous, but the Lord has blessed us, and my wife is a stay-at-home mom now. And what I want to encourage some of you is that I feel in the spirit that there are those of you with there are those, there are people here that are withholding yourselves from doing the will of God because you don't know what the price you're, you're going to have to pay is. And I'm wanting to encourage you to do it anyway. If you submit to God as your first priority, the Lord will bless. One of, the, one of the things that you have to understand about the will of God is when you start doing it, one of the reasons for the circumstances getting tighter and getting harder is that there are things that the Lord has to remove from your life to add to your life what he wants you to have. You have to go through a process of being stripped back, laid bare before the Lord, not because he's mean, not because he's unkind, but because if he doesn't do that, then he's going to be adding things to carnality, and he will not do that. He will not do that. So if you're submitting to the will of God every day, then that means you're submitting to his process every day. And you're submitting to being stripped back, laid bare. And then the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added, one, two, three, unto you. If you pursue the addition without pursuing him first, you will not get the addition. Because it doesn't work that way. It only works, kingdom math only works the kingdom way. It's not common core. You can't change math and just expect to come out with the same answer. My kids were in public school for a few years, and I remember my son came home with two-digit multiplication. And in some weird way, he get the answer, and I stared at it for probably a good 20 minutes. I'm like, what? thought you just multiplied and added and you got the answer, but why are there so many circles? Why are there arrows? I just don't get it. You can't change the math. As people of the kingdom, we cannot choose our own way. We have to submit to his way. If you want the favor of the Lord, you have to submit to his way. He doesn't put his favor on things that don't do things his way. He doesn't put his blessing on things that don't go his way. He doesn't. He won't do it. He won't do it. And he's so kind and so loving that there are times where he'll let us have our own way for a season until we come, with the scripture says, we come to the end of ourselves. And we reach that point where we're willing to now submit to him every single day. One of the things I had to submit is preaching loud. I am a very loud person. It's my son saying, amen, I'm a very loud person. I am not calm, very excitable. 
very excitable. Um, I like to yell. I love a good shout. And several years ago, the Lord just kind of said, okay, you know, let me just take that from you. And now you do what you do. And I'm like, Lord, what is that? I, I, I can't do anything without that. But you go, and the Lord was like, you're going to have to learn. And so now, Brother Scuno, if I do more of this than I do anything else, <laughs> I haven't yelled from a pulpit in a long time. But when you're walking in submission to God, when you're walking in submission to God, anybody want the blessing of the Lord upon your life? One of the greatest blessings you can have is, is the health and safety of your family. But if, you, if you're not faithful to the house of God, you can't have those things. I don't know who this is for. I could be wrong. Nobody's told me this is true. I feel it in the spirit, so I'm gonna, the Lord's never wrong. There are people attached to this church. Some of you are here. Some of you are not here. That you are not faithful with your finances. And you want to know why your family is always sick. And you want to know why... You're always scared for the safety of your family. The reason is, is because you're not walking in submission, and therefore you're not walking in the blessing of God. If you want to change your way, first thing you must do is repent. Do what's right, and the blessing of the Lord will return. blessing of the Lord will return. I understand with COVID, there are a lot of people, at Antioch, we've, there have been s several families that have been financially burdened because of COVID. So I understand that. Um, but we must do things the kingdom way to receive the kingdom blessing. And I'm not just talking about dollar signs. One of the greatest things the Lord has blessed our family with is the peace of the Lord upon our home. You, you don't understand how awesome that is until you witness to someone whose family is nearly destroyed because they have no peace. And they want to know, how do you do it? How, how do you survive? I have the peace of God on my home. I have the peace of God on my home. Yes, my children... You know, they have spats. <laughs> they, <laughs> they fight occasionally. <laughs> but, but the peace of God is over our home. We're not perfect, but the peace of God is on our home. The blessing of the Lord is on our home because we choose to submit to God every day and put his kingdom first. I feel like I'm only just being a witness to some things you guys have heard, have been taught here. I just feel like I'm just agreeing with it, and another voice is helping you. So this might just go a di couple different directions in a few moments. But anyway, all, 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 that, I'm, all that I've said thus far is because I want y the Lord wants you, you and me to understand that if we want things, if we want the things of God, we have to be willing to do things God's way. We have to be willing to do things God's way. If you want to be healed, you have to be willing to receive God's way. I heard a story of, of a man of God who said that he was praying for this guy, had an ulcer in his, had a mass in his stomach. And the guy would not receive his miracle. And he said he was praying. He's like, Lord, I'm going to have to hit this guy to receive his miracle. And the Lord kind of gave him witness, wit a witness for it. <laughs> he's like, Lord, I'm, I don't, I don't want to have to hit this guy. And the guy just wouldn't receive it. So he just kind of hauled off and boom, <laughs> gut checked the guy. <laughs> the mass was gone. <laughs> when the guy came up, I was like, <laughs> 
better be glad that miracle happened, buddy. <laughs> you better be glad that miracle happened. <laughs> you got to do things God's way. What if the Lord told you to put your, that putting him first meant before you pay your bills, you pay your tithe? Well, what, well, Brother Isaac, if, if I do that, the math won't work out and I won't have enough to pay my bills. Okay. Com, um, complaint logged and heard. But what if the Lord told you that in order to receive his blessing upon your finances, you had to pay your tithe first? Would you be willing to do it? What if the Lord told you that in order for you to receive the blessing of the Lord upon your family, that you needed to, rather than pray on your way to work, to actually get up and pray in your home first every day? What if the Lord wanted to add some souls to, to teach Bible studies to, to your life, but he said, the only way I'm going to do it is if you create me some space, some time in your schedule for me to do it. You have to create the time first, and then I'll fill it. What if the Lord told you to take your investments, cash them all out, and wait for me to tell you what to do with it? What if that's the direction he told you to go? Would you be willing to obey him to receive his blessing? One of the things we forget about, about life is that our lives are not actually compartmentalized. They're not actually in sections. Our life is lived before the Lord. The entirety of our life. Not just the church part, not this, just the social part, not just the, the soul winning part, not just the friend part, not just the work part, people you play baseball with, you know, you know, you have all these different pockets of ways you act based on where you're at. But one of the things the Lord wants to do in the, in the, in the, in the church, if we will allow him, is to teach us that our life is lived entirely before him. And that when we compartmentalize our life, we take control over the part and over each part and determine how much we're a, we will allow him to move in our life. We control is one of the biggest hindrances to spiritual growth. Control. Or said better, iniquity. You find yourself stagnant in growth, it's probably because you are you are controlling. There are people in here you control actually how much you pray. And because you control how much you pray, God can't actually bless you. Didn't know prayer could be a hindrance, did you? Yeah. Some of you have have given an exact dollar. I don't know why I'm talking about money today. I'm check me, please check me. Some of you have given exact dollar amounts for years, and you've wondered why your finances haven't been blessed. And they haven't been blessed because there have been offerings where the Lord told you to give a certain amount and you didn't obey. And because you didn't obey, the Lord can't. He, you're just giving because out of habit. You're not giving because the Spirit is prompting. Brother Schoonover, it's like we were talking yesterday, the other day about prayer. If you're just praying just to pray, but is the Spirit itself prompting you to pray for so-and-so, or is the Spirit prompting you to give X amount of dollars. If the Lord spoke to me right now and said, Isaac, I want you to put $57 in the offering. If I put a, 
nickel more than $57 in the offering, I have disobeyed God. That's me taking control. Well, I don't have change. Well, then you go get change and put $57 in the offering. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what Samuel told Saul. It is better that we obey to the letter of what God has said and we stop there than us to fill the emptiness with our own actions. One of the greatest things that our society struggles with is the fact that we've filled our heads with personal development books. And I've read them. I've read them. There's great principles in there. But when when we allow ourselves to apply those principles before we allow ourselves to apply the word of God to our lives. We allow carnality and iniquity to settle in our hearts and we become disobedient to the word of God. It's what happens. It is better for you to sit for hours waiting on direction from the Lord than for you to fill hours with your own schedule, just filling it, because I, I got to do something. Do you? So when I, when I was a kid, I, um, there were, I, have, I have a lot of uh, people in my life that said I was, what, what is that thing called, ADD or ADHD or something? Whatever. And um, one of the things I had to allow the Lord to teach me in my mid 20s to, to now is to be still. Always wanted to be doing something, always had to be, have some task I was accomplishing. But at some point in the last 10, 12 years, I've realized that there were times when the Lord was calling me to be still. Not because I necessarily needed rest, but because he wanted to see if I would listen. So if the Lord calls you to just sit still for a little while, will you submit to him? Well, I have a dinner schedule with such a so-and-so. Well, if the Lord told you to stay home, would you stay home? Or would you go to the dinner? Well, I have such a to do. I have to do this. I have to do that. Okay. But if the Lord told you to stay home, would you give up your schedule to do what God wants? This is not about, you know, sometimes as ministers of the gospel, we, we like to teach people the extremes so that they know where their boundaries are. The, one, of the, one of those is, what if the Lord calls you to go to Africa? What if the Lord calls you to start a church in your hometown? Okay, those are, those are out there. Could the Lord tell you those things? Yeah, absolutely. Will he? He might. He absolutely might. But there are things in our day-to-day life that we control, that the Lord is asking. If I ask you to do something different than what's on your schedule, will you submit to me? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. First means in order of time and priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. He goes on to talk about, for all these things, the Gentiles seek. But I'm asking you not to seek these things. I'm asking you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. But Lord, 
going back to the bankruptcy story, Lord, I need money. <laughs> okay, I've heard you, Isaac. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But, Lord, I literally need money to get groceries. I've heard you, Isaac. I've logged that complaint. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? What is that? And here is the, here is the thing that we must answer. Lord, what does that mean for me today? One place Jesus says, um, he's talking, he's talking, I can't remember who he's talking to, but he says something to the effect of sufficient unto the day is the trouble thereof. And then another place he says, take no thought for tomorrow, for the things of tomorrow will take care of themselves. Okay, we have an issue as humans. We like to know what move we're going to make six years from now. If we can, we like to know what's what's going on, you know, what's going on six days, six months, six years. So in six hours, I have and then six days from now, I have. A, so you have your calendar planned out and wonderful. But the Lord wants us to wants to know from us. Are you willing to submit your day to day to me? Because tomorrow's going to take care of itself. And the trouble that's in today is for today. It's not for tomorrow. You can't deal with that tomorrow. You have to deal with today. So in, in the today, in the now, in the moment we're in now, Lord, am I submitting to you? This is, these are questions that I, I've had to ask myself. Am I submitting to you today? Am I doing what, you're supposed to, what I'm supposed to be doing in your kingdom today? There have been days where... Um, I come, out, I come out from work, and I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, rest of refreshing prayer, and I'm just enjoying my time with God. And without fail, the second I walk out of the door of the building, the Lord starts giving me my list of things he wants me to do on the way home. <clears throat> okay, before you pull out of the parking lot, I need you to text, text so-and-so, tell them, call so-and-so, see how they're doing. And there's like three, four, or five things, and I'm like, Lord, I just got out of work. It's been an eight, eight nine-hour day. I just want to go home. Okay, but I need you to call these people first. Lord, I mean, can I please? And in, the, in that moment, I have a decision to make, Brother Johnstone. Am I going to choose my will or his? Am I going to be obedient to what he's telling me to do today? Or am I going to take control and do things my own way? And I have to admit there are days where I fall short. There are days I fall short. There are days I make that phone call, and that phone call lasts longer than, it, longer than it takes me to get home. I get home, and I'm still in the car. Another 20, 30 minutes talking to, had a young man that was going through a major thing in the church, and the Lord told me to call him. So I called him, and we just started talking. And I get home, and I'm still in the car. And the kids are like, Daddy! Makes me feel warm and fuzzy when I get home. And I'm like, just hold on one second. Daddy wants to see you. Just give me one, just give me one minute. Finish the conversation. But the, 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 the point is, and, and what I'm trying to get to and trying to impart here, is that in our lives, we must lose control and be willing to be navigated in situations to be able to minister to the people that the Lord has placed in our lives to minister to. Sometimes they are saints, and sometimes they're co-workers. Sometimes they are sinners, sometimes they're backsliders. But we have to be willing to be navigated. We have to be willing to be navigated, Brother John Stone. That's what you're talking about in the church in Salem. You know, you know, there are people that are finally realizing, okay, if I'm willing to let the Lord navigate me, he will do something. It's not because they're in control of it. They receive the word of faith, Brother Schoonover, right? They receive the word of faith, and they're like, okay, God, we're going to put this to the test. 
navigate me. So you, all of a sudden, you sit there. You gotta go to the bathroom. You run to the bathroom. On your way out, you just hear a conversation. Somebody in need. The Lord said, respond to that. So now I respond. Had you not gone to the bathroom when you did, you would have missed it. But you were navigated. Did the Lord speak to you? Go to the bathroom. No, he did not. <laughs> maybe, he, maybe, maybe he did, I don't know. <laughs> It could happen. Go go to the water fountain. You know you haven't filled up your your water bottle yet. Oh hey Bob, are you willing to be navigated through your day? Are we willing to be navigated through our day? Because I'm ministering to myself now too. Am I willing? Are you willing? Are we willing to be navigated through our day to day life, positioned in circumstances? Now here's another thing. We all have a destiny. We all have an ultimate purpose. And Brother Johnstone talked about this. We all have a purpose that God has called us to, a a work in his kingdom we are made for. But he doesn't get us all to our purpose the same way. He doesn't. And because he doesn't, we like to compare ourselves and say, you know, so-and-so's preparation is this, and -and so-and-so's preparation is this, and -and so-and-so this, and -and so-and-so that. Well... Until we submit completely to the process that God has called us to, and and sometimes, and this is hard for us to hear, sometimes submitting to those circumstances means stop trying to get out of them. We have to stop trying to get out of circumstances and be willing to submit to where God has us so that he can literally navigate us and position us to fulfill our purpose in his kingdom. But until we allow our flesh to die, you know, until we get to the place where we are just spirit-filled jellyfish, you know, going with the flow of his river, not the river of the world, that's what I'm talking about. We, gotta, we, we have to obey the word of God in doctrine. We have to obey the word of God. And how we, we have to obey the, the, Lord, the, the word of God in those areas. So I'm not talking about not standing for truth. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not standing for our flesh being the way we navigate our life instead of the spirit of God. Amen. I, I was inquiring of the Lord recently about um, angels, and I think this is the final thing I'm going to say. Um, I was inquiring of the Lord about angels recently and how they work and how they minister with the people of God. And this is what he said to me, until the people of God truly submit themselves to my will, and he said, and that includes stop trying to get out of circumstances that I've placed them in, the angels of the Lord can't work with them the way they're supposed to. And, I, and in my mind, I was like, really, Lord? Really? We can't truly get into supernatural ministry until we truly accept where he has us, submit to where he has us, and do the work he's called us to do there. Then and only then can we step into true supernatural ministry. In the testimonies you're sh- sharing, those are people who are, not tr- who are not trying to get out of their circumstances. They're just trying to obey God today, this moment. And when we have, we have tools to dig ourselves out, when we've, when we've read the books and received the understanding that we think we can, we think we can pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and get her done. No. No, that's not what God has called us to do. God has called us to be his, his hands, his feet, his voice, his mind in the earth. Remember, the scripture says in uh, Matthew chapter 6, um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Why would he say in earth instead of on earth? unless he was referring to human agency. 
in order for the will of God to be done on the earth, it has to first be done in her. Can we pray? We might be giving this to you. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Father, we receive from you this word. This is not meant to be corrective. This is not meant to be a rebuke, but refining. Refine us, Lord. Refine me. Refine me. Father, I repent before you for taking control of things in my life that you have allowed to perfect me and to make me new. And I submit to you afresh and anew today in Jesus' name. I submit to you today so that your spirit can flow through me freely, so that your, your angels can work with me, so that we can be involved in ministry together, so we can, we can submit to you, Father. Forgive me, Lord, for making my own decisions. Forgive me, Lord, for not prioritizing you and putting you first. In Jesus' name. All right. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to finish finish the, the story Nick reminded me of a part I didn't share. So when I came here six years ago, I was struggling to find a career because a person, people like me don't know what they want to do because there's so many things they can do. There's so many things that can be done. What, what, where am I supposed to be? So I came here under, at the will of God, in the will of God, and began working to fix iPhones. And shortly thereafter, I had gotten connected with a friend of mine who was, had an IT company. And we started working together. He needed an extra set of hands. I started working with him part time. As time went on with him, it was one day we were going to a job in another state, and I he started asking me questions. And the thought occurred to me: Well, I could maybe the Lord wants me to do this as a career. I think I could do some of this stuff. So he, at his encouraging, I started you know studying for to get certified in certain, with certain skills and whatever. And um, I had a chance, in, a chance encounter. I had a God encounter with a unsaved cousin of my wife at Christmas dinner. And he said, uh, the company I work for does DOD contracts. We're, we're hiring. We're giving people clearances. You have a little bit of experience. I think you'd be a good fit. So I, you know, filled out an application, submitted my resume that I had at the time, and they um, b- liked what they saw and hired me, put me through the process to get a government clearance. Now, what's hard to do in the Department of Defense is get a clearance with a bankruptcy on your record. Um, but what I, what I felt to do and what I was told to do was don't hide it, put it at the forefront, just admit what happened, um, because if you admit what happened, it shows them that you can't be exploited because you're being honest about it. So, okay, so the Lord opened that door, walked through it. I worked for that company for three months on a job that was 90, a 90-minute 90 drive from home. Um, I got that job um, a couple months before Jordan was born. I worked that job for three months. The Lord opened another door. I, I was like, Lord, I can't keep making this drive. This is hard. I have My wife's at home. She's got a newborn. She needs help. I, I can't be this far from home. And so I got a call one day. Uh, I had posted my resume up on a, on a clearance jobs website, and I got a call from this guy. And he said, um, you seem like you're a good fit. We're 20 miles from home. I was like, that's right in my range. I didn't want to go to D.C. because of traffic. So I was like, this felt like this was the will of God, so I did it. I worked at that place for a year. The contract was up, and I was like, Lord, what do I do? And I got a call from another person um, looking, for, looking to fill a senior systems administrator position. I was not a senior systems administrator at the time, but it came with a 70, I think it was 75 or 80% pay increase for me. 
Um, and I, I was blown away at the opportunity and went, went to that job, worked that job for 18 months. And during that 18 months, um, the Lord brought in a, a, a lady who had been in the industry for 20 years already. She had taken a pay cut to take the job with my company, but she was trying to get into a different line of work, so she decided that it was what she wanted to do. People don't do that, so I have chosen to thank you that the Lord directed her, even though she was unsaved, the Lord directed her to this job at that time, and she and I ended up spending a ton of time together, she, her imparting her knowledge to me, me learning the trade. And I worked there until the contract was up there, and that program just shut down um, last month, actually. Um, and then I'm walking down. This is the story I told you this morning. Um, we have a meeting at we have a meeting in our computer lab with a senior government official from our program. That they start talking about how the program is having trouble. The program's going to be shut down. Warning bells start going off, and I'm like, "Okay, Lord, where to from here?" Where to from here? And the Lord said, you know, didn't say anything. And so what I've just learned is to follow my peace, do what the Lord says. And so I'm walking out of the lab one day for lunch, and this guy stops me that I had met. He's like, hey, Isaac, do you um, know anybody that's looking for a job? So this was like the day after this meeting. And I was like, possibly. <laughs> and he said, um, is it you? Possibly. <laughs> and he's like, send me your resume. I'll get you an interview in three days. Cool. So I got home, and this, this is part of our process. We said, Lord, I don't have a word to do this, but I feel like this is what you want me to do to take care of my family. So I'm pushing send on this email. You can make it get lost out in email space somewhere, but I'm trusting that I'm doing this in your will. Push send. He doesn't really respond to my email. Besides saying, cool, he forwards it to a guy. I get an interview on Tuesday, which was three business days later. The guy, I, I leave that conversation with a verbal that I have the position. And it came with a 30% pay increase. Um, and after that, at, at this point, each job I've gotten was literally handed to me by God. So now I'm not worried um, because the Lord has put me wherever he wants me. So then a year goes by, and um, the Lord has direct, directed us for my wife to come home from work. That's another story. Um, actually, I'll tell it just for the sake of time, for the sake of expanding my time. <laughs> I feel to tell it. The Lord spoke to us and said, I want your wife to come home in March. I was like, okay. I don't know how this is going to happen. We're, she's working full-time as a nurse. I'm working full-time in IT. We have someone that's helping us watch the children, and we're homeschooling the kids in the evenings. And um, he said it, and then in, was it January you talked to Michelle? So after, in December, the Lord tells us this. In, in January, our uh, the lady is washing our kids for us, comes to us and says, the, um, I'm going to need to leave working for you. Okay. When? March 30th will be my last day. <laughs> I was like, hmm, timing works. I was like, that's fine. You know, thank you for, you know, so the Lord did it. And so we lived on the income that I had at that time for the, for the lat for nine, ten months. And the, I've started feeling like I needed to start looking for another job because I needed benefits. And um, through the process, I had gotten a $10,000 pay increase. And I was very thankful for it. And so I started sending my resume out. The lady who I had just mentioned a few moments ago um, had left were working with me and was now somewhere else. And she's like, I can get you in. I can get you in. Felt peace about it. So I sent my resume, did the interview, got in, had the job offer sitting in my inbox. And I was like, Lord, do I accept it? And he led me. He said, accept it. Okay. So I accepted the job. And never once, Brother Screamer, did I have peace to leave my current job. But he said to take the job. So I took the job. And um, 
we were negotiating salary and they, they were refusing to budge on their offer, which was, you know, that's fine. It's their prerogative. And um, so I went to my boss and said, you know, here's my situation. Um, benefits at the current company are astronomically priced. I told him the number and he was mind blown. And I said, I'm considering leaving. I've accepted an offer to leave. Um, but to be fair to you, I just, you know, I felt like I was supposed to tell you. He's like, all right. Um, he goes to his boss, and they call my company, because my company is a subcontractor, and they say, um, you guys have a problem. We're losing people from your company because your benefits are bad. We don't want to lose this guy. So this doesn't happen in almost any industry. Um, but they call th my company and say, say these things, and they say, we don't want to lose this guy. You got to fix this problem. We're going to mod his position we're going to mod his position to allow you to bill us for more money. But we're not billing this to you so that you can make more money off of him. We're billing this to you. We're, we're changing this so that you can give him more money because we don't want him to leave. And so um, it, I, that was actually a conversation I wasn't supposed to know about. But my boss um, told me that it, this was happening. So I was like, well, praise God, you know, whatever. So. I'm on, I'm on the phone one day, you know, this is all going on during work days. So I get a call one morning and I say, and he says, um, Isaac, we're going to offer you this amount, you know. And I was like, thank you. I appreciate it. It doesn't move the needle for me. I'm sorry. I, I'm, you, you understand I'm not trying to be money hungry, but I have to take care of my family. And so he's like, I understand. Um, he's like, thank you and whatever. So four hours later, I get another phone call. Isaac, we've gone over the numbers again. The offer we made you, I want you to add $20,000 to it. And that's what we're going to offer you to stay. It was mind blown. Did not expect this offer. And I said, that changes things a little bit. And um, they said, um, talk it over with your wife. So I called my wife. She felt good about it. I called my dad. He felt good about it. I called my pastor. Um, he was in an executive council meeting. <laughs> he couldn't answer the phone, but he responded to my email and said, that sounds good. Take the job or, or accept the offer. So I accepted the offer. Um, and I am currently being paid as a senior level systems administrator with four years experience uh, because the Lord has put me where he wanted me and I allowed him to navigate me. And so I was sharing this with my pastor as all this was happening and I was, he's been intimately involved in the things that have gone on in my life. And I said to him, pastor, I just, I just feel to tell you this, Lacey and I have done the math and there is a six figure difference between what I was making four years ago and what I'm making now. And he just shook his head and was like, he's like, Isaac, you and your wife, when all this started happening to you, every decision you've made was because you wanted to put the kingdom first. And because you put the kingdom first, this is the blessing that God has chosen to give you. And I want to encourage you if you need a job, if you're willing to let the Lord navigate you, he will give you one. If you need a pay increase legitimately and you have been obedient to the Lord, he will give it to you. It's unprecedented to experience the, experience the things that the Lord has, has given to me. I've not sought after it. And I, I'm not being falsely humble here. I have not sought after it. I have always wanted to be in full-time ministry, and the Lord has never let me. And I've chosen to believe that's because it's not his will. And so I'm still going to put you first, Lord. And so in putting him first, he has given me job after job after job after job. And pay increases that my peers have had to burn bridges to get, he has just handed to me because of his favor and because of seeking his kingdom first.
Is that okay? Will you stand for a minute? As we were sitting this morning around the living room, and I wasn't aware of any of this stuff. I don't even know how we got on the subject. But he began to share all these things with me. I immediately felt, man, you got to share this today. That's pretty private. That's not stuff somebody wants to get in the microphone and talk about. But my heart ached because I know I'm aware, and the Holy Ghost is aware of situations in the room. Situations that aren't in the room, that are outside the room, that are watching virtually. Maybe watch this later, today or tomorrow. Because what you, what you left off was, you got, a, you got that, you finished your degree, right, to get that job. Yeah. <laughs> we feel all these pressures sometimes to do it the world's way. I'm not discounting that. Don't, don't get me wrong here. I'm not, we get all this pressure to do it the world's way. Do you believe that God has a way today? Do you believe that God is concerned about you, that he cares about you? And when, I'm, when you will purpose to seek first his kingdom and everything, he takes care of all the rest of it. I didn't say anything to him. I, I just, well, let's let the Holy Ghost deal it. I didn't figure he'd want to share that. So when he looked at me and said, I want to share the testimony I shared with you today, I thought, that's your business, not mine. And if the Holy Ghost didn't tell you to share that, but the Holy Ghost is trying to help somebody. He's wanting to encourage somebody today. Would you close your eyes right now and just talk to the Lord? Receive his encouragement.